it's eight o'clock and time to get started what's up fast turn radio spreecast listeners hope everybody's having a good night hope everybody had a great week made lots of money and uh took some action on all the bundling talk that we had from last week uh didn't quite get to the uh the coals flips and got a little news on that so we'll we'll cover that a little bit and uh got all kinds of interesting things from you know do people share too much information why do they share so much information uh got some of my own wholesale stuff that came in placed another order tonight so i'll talk a little bit about that and definitely going to focus on the question that i posted above and that is oh actually let me check is my audio coming through okay first of all I did not check to make sure my audio levels. Now we got to come up a little bit. There we go. All right, that that should be better. Um, all right, looks like we got it all set. Yeah, I had it too low. Sorry, guys. Okay, so uh, gonna get started with the the or gonna get to the main topic tonight, which is posted above. If you started FBA, had all the equipment you needed, new what you know now now that's the tough part we'll talk about that a little bit but if you knew what you know now and had somewhere between five thousand and ten thousand in seed money where would you start would it be retail arbitrage would it be online arbitrage wholesale liquidations plr you know there, there's a, a ton of different ways to go with all this stuff so we're going to talk about all that plus whatever else is on your mind because hey this show is all about you guys uh, I'm just here uh, having fun, hanging out, like to talk about business, and so that's why I do this, but it's really all about you guys. So if you don't like any of that, then let me know, and hey, you can say, you know what, forget it. Let's go down this road. So you guys lead the conversation. I'm just here to uh, kind of narrate the conversation, and we'll just have fun. So, all right, going to take these off so I can actually see. And thank you again, Alan Miola. For the wonderful fast turn radio glasses one of these days i may just break down and actually buy some for you guys oh frank great question what is plr that is private label rights which means you take this little spray bottle right here and instead of whatever label is on there you put your label and it says fast turn spray bottle and you get that as as a product sent to you in bulk and you can turn around and sell fast turn spray bottles that's your private label. That is your own product now. So it is, uh, you know, it, it's nothing more complicated than that. Now, there are a lot of risks, and we can talk about some of that. Yeah, fast turn spray bottles are awesome. Takes the stickers off of everything. But, yeah, branded glasses. Like, like you could sell these. And, and, you know, in case you guys are unaware, Chris Green actually does sell the Scan Power glasses. So you that's his private label. That is his product, his product only. Uh, you know, his stuff's all trademarked, so you can't sell them unless he says it's okay to sell them. So that, that's private label. Uh, there are some risks that, that come along with that. There are some added insurances that you have to get. But anyway, so that, that, that's just some of what you can do, and I'm sure there's other ideas that aren't even coming to my mind right now. So... Um, See, you guys are already jumping into the, the questions. I wanted to save that for last. I wanted to cover just some of the, the little stuff first. But, oh, there you go. Bob Willie, more than happy to share his uh, his own private label product. And I'll go ahead and put that on the screen. Whoops. Unless I just click the link, and then that won't work too well. So there you go. If you want to see an example, perfect example, Bob Willie's own uh, private label product. There's Alan Miola. What's going on, man? Uh, that that would be a pli private label product. That is something that he makes himself. So, uh, good stuff. Good stuff. So we'll cover all that. See, the viewers, we're up to 56 already. So that's cool. We are climbing. I was afraid that we are gonna. Oh, and and Kristen Martin says Bob does it work. Of course it works. It came from Bob Willie. You think he's gonna sell you some junk? He's not gonna. He's not gonna sell you goo gone in a in a little bottle like this and say it's odor be gone and it's good stuff no he's gonna he's gonna tell you hey that's good stuff came from Bob Willie ah uh, all right so let's see let's 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 look around a little bit since we talked so much about bundling last week I just want to kind of catch you guys up to speed on where I'm at I did get in one of my wholesale orders 
Uh, not a huge one. It was under a thousand dollars. It was a little over five hundred. So not a huge order, but uh, it was cool testing out a new new wholesaler. I liked the way everything went and real smooth process, easy to order through them. Everything showed up in in boxes within boxes, so it's well packaged. Very happy with it. It's at least the beginning. It may be all that I do for the back to school this year, but it's at least a, a good chunk of what I'm going to do for back to school. Uh, I ordered these products about a week ago. I noticed that their ranks were somewhere around the 25 to 50,000 range, and a lot of those have come down to like the 25,000 range. So you know, they're, they're increasing in sales, which tells me, yes, go figure. Um, you know, the back to school time is here. I mean, I, I was at Target today and I saw parents buying, or maybe a teacher, because there were some like dry erase markers, but they had scissors and crayons and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it, it's happening. Back to school is, is getting cranked up. So hopefully you already got your orders in, because if not, you're going to miss that, that first wave. You know, I told you guys last week, August 1st is when our, our kids go back to school and all the kids around here. So it's time to get that stuff going. And I don't even know when the colleges kick up and some of the schools in the north, I know, get out later than, than we do. So up north, they're going to go back a little bit later. So you get about this two month span, I think, of uh, where you can hit this back to school stuff. And Darla is, is joining us. So nice to have you here, Darla. I was I was missing you. Uh, yeah. And speaking of Target, I'll go down. I'll go. Uh, I'll, I'll digress a little bit and tell you guys. Uh, don't know if you've been to Target lately, but they have the their big summer end of summer sale going on where everything's on clearance, it seems like. Uh, nothing really good for, uh, right now, nothing good in this area. It's like you know 30% off, maybe 50% off. But I want you guys to keep in mind as you're seeing this, um, first of all, don't, don't take what you see as prices right now as the long-term prices long-term being over the next month or two, because this is nationwide. All that same stuff that is at Target, at your Target, at 50% off is probably 70% off somewhere else that maybe started a little sooner. Uh, Matthew Fraley, Fast Turn Radio Live. Yes, sir. Welcome and uh, happy to have you here. So, yeah, uh, just keep in mind that, that these sales are going to be available to everybody. So, if you're not getting them at 70% off is kind of my, my suggestion. I, I'm not sure that I'm touching them, even even if they're Lego, which you know are going to fly out the door. Okay, uh, The prices probably won't won't hold very well. Now, if you want to buy them and you're, you got some extra money in the budget, and of course, we'll get to that later in our conversation, but uh, you know, if you want to maybe hold them until fourth quarter when some of the people sell out a little bit lower, then it might be worth it to you. But Anyway, just I, I want you guys to be aware, especially anyone that, that is kind of new to the cycle of things that maybe don't understand. Yeah, the, the Lego clearance that you see, everybody sees. And the prices that you see now, is, they are not the prices you're going to see a month from now. Because those people that hold out and don't, don't buy until 70% off are going to be able to come in, undercut you, and still make more profit than you can buying at 30, definitely. And even 50% off. They're just going to have a lower cost of goods. So be careful. Um, be aware and, you know, make informed decisions. If you see 62 sellers on something, that's probably going to be 100 and something sellers shortly. And the prices are going to dip for a little while. And that's that's just the nature of things. Now, as those inventories sell through, the prices will come back up to a, a normal level. And those Legos that are, you know, regular regularly twenty dollars that uh people buy for six and maybe sell for fifteen they'll eventually get back up to the twenty dollar level it's just gonna probably take some time all right and and bob willie's saying he's killing it with the target stuff right now see and and it pays to be early in there's no money in the target stuff i i scanned today at thirty percent off uh there there was nothing i mean i, I bought some stuff for the kids just because hey legos you know a few bucks I can handle that, but no way was I flipping any of it. Um, yeah, so uh, fifty percent off, some seventy percent off. There you go. So just uh, be aware that yes, the deals are out there, the sales are starting, but 
so is the competition. And we're all going to have access to pretty much the, the same same sort of inventory. I learned that lesson last year. This is this is not me trying to give scare tactics. This is me telling you I went a little too deep in a few things last year and then I went, oh my God, look at all these sellers and how are they selling so much lower than I am? And this is just unbelievable. Well, you know, because that's the way business works and that's the way Target works, especially. They are great about uh, you know lowering prices across the board on all products on a consistent schedule which makes it nice for retail arbitrage but at the same time it uh, makes it easy for everybody and what's easy for everybody tends to bring in competition which drives down prices in the short term anyway so um, all right and Bob saying he spent 1100 on Thursday 400 on Sunday most of it is either in or on its way to FBA so that, that I mean that's the one way to do it is if you're gonna do it Get that stuff. Do not sit on it. Get us in and get it turned. Um, oh, Kmart toy clearance. Thank you, Teresa Rose. Kmart toy clearance still happening. I saw somebody posted a 70% off all Kmart toy clearance. So it's whatever the clearance price is plus an additional 70% off, which is great. So you're seeing the stores. They're clear. What, what's going on? They're clearing out their inventory for Q4. So they want to blow it out the door in August and probably have it all gone by September so that they can start getting the new shipments in. The shelves are nice and cleared for all the new toys. You're probably going to have movie releases coming out soon and all the toy tie-ins plus the hot, you know, Christmas items and all that kind of stuff. They need room. So they need to blow out this stuff that's been sitting there for the last six to nine months and they need to get rid of it. We're the kind of people that come in and help out. Just make sure you're getting a good deal and you're not not jumping too soon. I mean, if it, if it's not at least fifty percent off, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it. Uh, yeah, Toys R Us doing the same thing. Uh, honestly, I don't know what Toys R Us is doing. They, they've been blowing things out for the last two months. I, I it seems to me like they're going out of business or something. But I don't know. I, I can't make heads or tails of what what Toys R Us is trying to pull off because they are just getting rid of everything. James is saying even longer than that. Okay, so. Yeah, they're uh, 90 percent off the ninety percent off sale. Exactly. Now, oh, Jay Bain. I didn't even realize who said that. Scanner Monkey himself, Jay Bain, is in the house. What's going on, man? Nice to have you here. And uh, yeah, so honestly, I don't know what's going on with Toys R Us. It's insane. So if you can, <laughs> if you can, <laughs> he said, "Hey, big sexy, what's up, people?" <laughs> uh, you know, if you can find good deals at Toys R Us, go for it. And ours is pretty well wiped out. We only have one in Savannah. Um, I, I don't know. I think there's four or five of us that that source in this area. Jay Bain out there giving away UPC codes. Anybody looking for some bolos? Apparently, we'll just go ahead and delete that real quick. There we go. We'll take care of that for you, Jay. No, no need to give away all your secrets. And James Hoagland was on it. He said too late. Yeah, he snatched it up on you. <laughs> Pop vinyl. All right. So, yeah, I did want to mention the Target thing. So just uh, just keep that in mind, especially for the new sellers. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, Javon James. I wonder, uh, Javon, I don't think he even listens to my spreecast or, or at least not live. But he brought up an interesting little uh, thread in, in scan power. And Javon... You know, it's a love-hate thing. Sometimes I love him. Sometimes I hate him. You know, sometimes I think he's hilarious. Other times I want to choke him. But whatever. You know, he, he's an entertaining guy. And I think that's why he does a lot of what he does is just for entertainment value. And that's cool. Because he does entertain people. Um, oh, oh, last, sorry. I just saw this from Bob Willie. Uh, hopefully you guys see this, this little sticker. You want to pay attention. That there's some information for you. Uh, how to read the clearance stickers. That's all for Target. You see the little number up in the right hand corner will show you the percent off and you can read through some of the, the markdown schedules and all that kind of stuff. And if it ends in eight, it's supposed to be marked down again. If it ends in four, uh, it's the lowest it will ever be. I've never seen anything that ends in four, but I've never seen 90% off either. So who knows? Uh, yeah, it's good stuff. All right, so moving on to Javon James, because he's, he's just a funny dude. Uh, he put up this link in Scan Power, or, or started this thread. And, and I, I definitely did not take any of it personally. Uh, 
you know, that you can read through some of the comments and some of it, I don't agree with people. Others, I think they're dead on, whatever. Uh, but it's it, it, basically he walked into a store and somebody came up to him and, and saw what he was doing and said, hey, uh, you know, I do uh, retail arbitrage too. So, you know, what, what do you think? What do you do? What, you know, just trying to find out what Javon knew. And, you know, so the whole discussion is, first of all, if, if that happens to you in a store, how do you handle it? And in a broader sense, between scanner monkey, scan power, fast turn radio, uh, the, the AFT, you know, all these different groups out there that are providing information to people, is it too much? Do we, do we give away too much? And why do we give away so much? You know, why is it that I just sit here every week and tell you what's going on in my business, what I think you should and should not be aware of, what kind of changes, or not not should be aware of, but you know, what what you need to be aware of, what maybe I suggest you do, recommend you do, what I recommend you don't do. You know, why? Why why do I do that? Um, and just so you guys know, it's because I have fun doing it. Yeah, it's it's not fun to just pack and ship and you know, we, we live in this like solitary little world a lot of the time. And that's not fun. You know, I, I enjoy finding the, the deals out there. I enjoy ordering wholesale. But if you can't really share that with somebody that understands, and if you can't have interaction like I do with you guys, I mean, this, this is my release time. This is my, my fun time each week where I get to just sit and talk. And hopefully people gain so, some uh, good information along the way. So, you know, hopefully you laugh a little bit. We have some fun. That's why I do this. It's fun. And I've said that many times. I quit my job at AT and T because it wasn't fun anymore. Now I only do things that I have fun doing. And if I don't enjoy doing it, why in the world would I do it? Because it's too stinking hard to do something you don't love. So I do not do this uh, to to really be called the FBA guru. And I don't do this because I need people focused on me. Actually, quite the opposite. I'm an introvert by nature. I am totally introverted. I can deal with sitting here looking at a chat screen and having a conversation with you guys this way, but really I'm just looking at me. I don't know if there's 50 viewers on here, 100 viewers or 200 viewers or 10. I don't pay attention to that stuff most of the time. Now I do know, yes, I can look down here and it shows 70 viewers. Doesn't make any difference. I, it doesn't matter how many people are watching. The only time I ever got nervous, like scared out of my mind, nervous kinda, <laughs> kinda on a spree cast was when I was looking at, at Dave Ramsey and Gary V. And I was like, holy crap, I am on a spreecast with Dave Ramsey and Gary V. Now that made me nervous. But just doing this stuff, yeah, it's not it's not for the fame and it's definitely not for the fortune. Uh it's, it's nothing. I just enjoy sharing what's going on in my business with you guys. So yeah. And uh Michael Flanagan tunes in because Dwayne is wicked smart. That's right. You want to listen to what Dwayne says because he's smart. He's been around a while. He came from up north, and now he's down south, so he's traveled all around. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. And Michael Flanagan, by the way, thank you. This goes back to a couple of spree casts ago, but remember when we talked about backing up your data? Michael Flanagan, right here's my data, buddy. That's that's my, my laptop on a uh, one terabit hard drive that fits in the palm of my hand, which is semi-unbelievable to me that that much stuff fits there, but... Yeah, got it all backed up with Michael's help, so thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, almost nailed the accent, I know. It's been a long time. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, my accent, my, my, I don't even know what kind of accent I have anymore. Is it Southern? Is it leftover New England? I, I don't even freaking know, man. I, I've got, a, I've just got a screwed up accent. I'm a little bit of everything. <laughs> it's a wicked piss <laughs> Uh, all right. So anyway, if you want to read through that thread, just a little bit of, you know, do we give away too much? And, and um, you know, I've, I've said this before also. There is no way you would see people, I, I, I truly believe this, you would not see people saying, I've been doing this for two months and I just broke 10K, which I saw the other day. Blew my mind. Really? Because it took me like eight or nine months to break through the 10K barrier. I think it was like September after I started. I started in January. I think it was September. And I went, how in the world, you know, how can someone do that? And then I thought about it and 
you know, there's a lot of information. There's there's a lot of people helping other people understand how to source and how to create listings. And, you know, Jessica LaRue has a great series that covers everything FBA related. And she's teaching people and has a lot of followers. And uh, Scanner Monkey, you know, 1,200 strong in Scanner Monkey provides a ton of information and value. I mean, I, I learned so much from Scanner Monkey, it's ridiculous. I, I now look for Monster High boy dolls because of Scanner Monkey. Never knew they even existed. Edie Gunter, yeah, or Gunter, I'm sorry. Uh, PAC, the, the, the PAC course, fantastic. Scan Power University, I got on myself and Chris Green for a minute. It's great, it, it's helping people. It, you know, so there is just so much out there that, uh, you know, it, it's it's easy to access information. So, you know, you pay a few bucks, you get the information, you join a group, you know, Scan Power is free, Fast Turn Radio is free. Um, it's There is just so much information. I think that's why people are succeeding so quickly. So, to those that say, no, don't tell them anything, I, I, I run the other direction, I'm going to keep it all to myself. There's only so much pie, but unlimited seats at the table, I read that quote. Yeah, you know, you you and I just won't agree on that stuff because if you really think that that you can consume all that pie, you're out of your freaking mind. There's no way. There, I watch over 700 Elsa dolls sell out in a matter of a few hours on Amazon. Okay, if you think you can keep up with all that pie, you're insane. I I I, I don't mean that. I don't. I'm not trying to be mean, but come on. You've got to have a bigger perspective on this stuff than that. When people can sell $10 million a month, you think you you think really that, that there's only so much pie? We, we haven't even touched the pie. There's there's what 70 of us in the in this room right now. How much how much pie can we actually fill in the Amazon world? They're a multi-billion dollar company. We cannot provide enough sales for Amazon. Now, is there not enough pie retail arbitrage? Maybe. Is there not enough pie online? Maybe. Wholesale, possibly liquidation, could be PLR. Don't know it, you know, but do it all, or or do don't do it all. Do the parts of that that you excel at. Focus on that, and you can carve out your own little niche, and you don't have to worry about actually helping somebody. You don't have to be afraid to help them. My God, please don't be afraid to help somebody. That's it. It's, why? Why would you be afraid to to <laughs> To look at somebody and go, well, I, I know you shouldn't buy that because of this, this, and this, but I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to let you go through the, the school of hard knocks like I did because if I had to go through it, why shouldn't you? Come on. Get out of here. That's junk. Help somebody out. You know, why, well, people need help sometimes. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't understand the fear. Um, you know, Scanner Monkey taught us the abundance mentality. And come on. I, I can't go to every big lots out there and, and scoop up the 72 caplet modium. So why in the world wouldn't I tell you guys, go get the 72 caplet modium. It's gold in a box. I can't go to Colorado where where uh, Carol Giambri lives and buy it all. So I might as well tell Carol, please go buy it and sell it and make lots of money doing it. It's good for her. It's good for me to, to know that I help somebody. It's good for Amazon because they sold product. It's good for the customer because they got what they couldn't find locally. I don't. I don't see the bad in that. I. I guess I miss it. I. I, I don't. I don't get it. So that's my stance, and that's that's my uh, that's my reply to Javon and all the people on that um, thread. And a big shout out to Mike Kappel who, uh, who who gave shout outs to to myself and Jay Bain and Scanner Monkey, Amanda Moak with Lego Investing. Oh. Who, Darla, can you get the link to Amanda's new book? I do want to. I do want to tell people that it's available. If you're interested in Lego investing, um, she has a new book out. I have not read it, so I can't tell you how great it is. I just know Amanda, and I've seen what she's done with the Lego Investing Group. And I have to believe if she she makes a full time living with Lego uh, by by doing brick sets and piecing out sets and all kinds of weird stuff. So, so if she took the time to write a book, I got to imagine it's good stuff. Um, yeah, Malcolm says I have five big lots by me. Do I need do I need to get the emodium, the seventy two caplet? Yeah, if you can find it, go for it, man. 
uh, I doubt you're going to find it. And the expiration dates are actually September of 14, so you would have to uh, merchant fulfill those. And but they're you know less than 13 ounces, so sure you can ship them off first class. Uh, I know Carol bought some insurance for like a buck a piece to to cover the insurance on the emodium that she found. So yeah, you, it, seriously, if you can find it and uh, go for it, man, it's good stuff. So all right, we're almost halfway through the spree cast, and I do want to get to this right up here. Oh wait, Robert Watson's got. One question. Are we talking Coles flips? No. I do want to tell you guys that I took a vote in the coaching group. All right. You guys know I have a, a coaching group, which, by the way, I've decided I am going to keep open until the end of the month when the new website launches. So anybody that wants to join, more than welcome to join. I'm not going to cap it through July. I'm just going to, once the new site is up, I'm going to transition all the, the prices over. Uh, but Coles flips. When I took a when I took a, a, a survey inside the coaching group and I said, should I talk about Coles flips on the Wednesday night spreecast or should I make that a coaching group only? Sorry guys, they said coaching group only. It would, you know, they were selfish. They don't want to share the information. So uh, it's going to be coaching group only. So no, I am not going to do what I know about Coles flips. But it's yeah, of course they did. Yeah, I, I know James. They're selfish, man. Uh, no, it's <laughs> so it's going to be, and and actually, I'm going to have somebody who is truly what I would consider an expert in Cole's flips. I, I won't tell you his numbers. I'm not at liberty to say, but let me tell you, he has done many, many thousands in Cole's flips just this year. So I'm going to have him on. We're going to talk Cole's flips and uh, let you guys know what's what's going on and uh, you know how you can at least make some of that money. Now I have not made thousands. I'm working on hundreds, but I see how the whole thing works, and it is pretty cool. Um, all right, so we are not talking coal slips. What we are talking was my original question. If you had, if you knew what you, if you knew what you know now, and that, and see that, that to me is the tough part, because um, the 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 only way to know what you know now is to learn, and you you learn by reading watching, listening, doing, okay, first and foremost, that, that's, that's the big one, doing. You can read all day long. If you don't do this stuff, you're never going to learn. So, you know, how do I learn about Amazon.ca? Well, I sent stuff to Amazon.ca and I said, hey, Canada, how about you, you buy some stuff? And Canada said, eh, we'll buy some stuff every now and then. That's, that's why you haven't heard me talk about Canada a whole lot lately because, man, sales are slow up there. I got the. I'm selling the number 25 toy right now. It sells one a day. Yeah, number number 25 toy in Canada sells one a day. Yeah, that's that. Think about that compared to the number number 25 toy on dot com. So when I say sales are slow, they are they are very slow. Uh, wonder why so slow. Two reasons that I know of. Yeah, slower than Vermont maple syrup. You betcha. Uh, two reasons that I know is. Prime is Prime and Amazon is not as big up there. It's not as prevalent as it is here. So you don't you don't have those 16 million Prime buyers. And from what I have heard from Maureen Benner, I, I haven't actually uh, verified this, but Maureen's pretty stinking smart. So I'm I'm going to believe her. Uh, the whole population of Canada is about the size of the population of California. So if you think about that. Uh, Imagine if, if your entire FBA business ranking was based on how many buyers, how, how many items got sent to California. Okay, that, that's, that's your, your customer base. So, I mean, it just has a tiny base, and therefore, it's, it's, uh, you're just naturally, naturally going to have slower sales up there. And then, of course, you have to uh, account for the the increase in price that you have to send and you know it, it costs about five dollars an item to send stuff up there so you have the your cost of goods plus your shipping fees plus taxes duties all that junk so you got to jack your prices way up which makes people less willing to buy i believe so th those are some of my so, some of my 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 speculative answers as to why sales are slow and and, and james i agree the bulk of my orders go to california too but I'm not trying to, to, to 
have that be the entire country. You know, that's one out of 50 states, and that's a, a fraction of the actual population. So I'm not trying to, I, I, I don't know, just a lot, lot, lot fewer sellers. So, all right, back to the, the now we will focus on this because I really do want your input. And uh, it was brought to me by a, a new coaching client, and I thought it was just a brilliant question. And I said, okay, I need to bring this up on this precast because I know there's a lot of smart people in this room that are going to give even better answers than I do. And I give some pretty good answers, I got to tell you. Um, I do. But I know you guys give great answers too, so I want, I want that person to hear from you as well. So you know what you know now. You have between $5,000 and $10,000 and sourcing seed money and you are brand new to FBA you've never sent in a shipment so do you start with retail arbitrage do you start with online arbitrage do you do you uh, start with wholesale where where do you go do you go PLR also and this was not brought up and I didn't mention this in the discussion with the person but I think one of the first things, if you've got that much, especially if you've got that much money, I'm probably going to put some of it towards actual insurance, maybe even get my LLC taken care of instead of waiting the way that I did and have to transfer everything over. You know, do you take some of that seed money instead of going straight into inventory? Do you, do you create your business? Do you use any of it to, to create your business that way? So let yeah i seen you guys all answered all these questions way too early i wanted to wait until now um what I, all right and james hoagland says wholesale with overstock pallets with retail arbitrage as fillers now what i would say oh, oh all right michael flanagan got all excited he's coming on camera he, he did he didn't just want to post in the group he wants to come on camera so we'll wait for him to to come up to speed and then we'll see if we can get him on there Looks like his camera's maybe a little slow right now. Uh, all right. Nope. Michael, sitting there. Give me the thumbs up if you're ready to come on camera. We got you at 87%. You're looking good. All right. Here we go. Hey, Dwayne. Hey, Michael. What's going on, man? Oh, not much, man. So I'll, I'll make yeah, mine, uh, mine real quick. So I've got all two right. grand. Yep. I'm going to take two grand and set it aside in the bank account just in case. I'm going to find a uh, warehouse space that has a dock, maybe a 20 by 30, 600 square feet. I can probably get that for about 500 bucks a month. So now I can receive in pallets. I'll find, again, this is all, it's, it's kind of funny because you said if you were just starting an FBA, but you know everything that you know now. So I, it's a catch twenty two. I know yeah. it, okay, it's so, that's that is definitely the tough part. Okay, so I know everything that I know now. So I never would have thought to do this if I just took ten grand and said I'm going to start this thing called FBA. So I've got a I've got a small warehouse space that has a dock. I've got a couple thousand dollars in, just set aside just in case. Um, I've got a five hundred dollar a month commitment um, for that space. I'm going to go out and find probably three to five wholesale distributors. So not direct to manufacturer. I'm going to find distributors because they rep for many um, different manufacturers. So that will let me go really wide. Probably going to look to do $1,000 to $1,500 uh, to three of those. So there's, what, $4,500 uh, in my first opening orders. I'll get those sent in and then rinse and repeat. And that's all I would do. I would only do wholesale. I wouldn't do any retail arbitrage. Uh, I might dabble with uh, some online. Um, I've done nothing with private labels, so I, I don't know that I would say that I would do that now, but definitely I do wholesale warehouse distribution. Yeah, I, uh, now let, let, me, let me change it just slightly. Okay, now let's say you've never sourced anything, you've never shipped anything, so you've got you've got the money, you've got the tools, but you don't have the knowledge. Now, now I, I have a feeling you're not starting with a warehouse and you know five wholesale accounts. So, 
Absolutely. Let me not. adjust it just a little bit. And and now, do you start with retail, online, wholesale? Where do you go? Yeah, if I don't have the knowledge, now we're talking about exactly what I did do, which is I went downstairs to my personal library, pulled out all those books that I read years ago, but they were still in great shape. I, I had a uh, personal CD collection of 800 CDs. I took every single CD I owned because somehow they found their way onto a hard drive and I could listen to them that way. Um, so I took every single CD, scanned every one, if it looked like it would sell, and it went. Uh, and then I started selling books. And that's how I started. And that is today how I would recommend somebody who hasn't done any of this. So that's a big difference between what you asked. So if you said, oh, yeah, it's what would I do if I was starting again with my knowledge and I had 10 grand in my pocket, that's what I'd do. If you said, now, what would you recommend somebody else do that has 10 grand in their pocket and they're just getting started with FBA and never done it before? Totally different answer. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and like I said, that that was that's how the the question was posed to me. But it's, I mean, it's almost impossible to really say, well, I'll just take all this knowledge that I have and I'll apply it now because the person that asked does not have that knowledge. They're trying to figure out, really, their their focus is, should I go retail arbitrage or online arbitrage uh, to start with? And, you know, I just, I thought it was a better discussion just to kind of open it up to all the possibilities. But, you know, I, I feel like you actually need, you need to get your feet wet in, <laughs> that, that's a tasty little drink right there. Uh, I'm, I'm normally a, ying, a yingling guy, but uh, I have to stay true. I'm a Boston boy, so... <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't mind the Boston Lager when it, when you get into some of the the seasonal ales. Not really my thing. Yeah. They, they get a little wonky with the flavors. I, I agree. But uh, and I like Heineken myself. That's that's probably my my normal go to. But uh, so yeah, it. W I think it's kind of hard to get into online arbitrage without at least doing some retail because you have no idea of of what product lines to even start to look at. I mean. It's easy to, to hear people say Lego sells fast and Nerf sells fast and what ranks to look for. But, you know, I didn't know until I actually went into stores, found them on clearance, sent them in and went, my God, you know, they, they sold before I knew they were at the warehouse. I mean, when we say fast, Lego sell fast or most of them do. I mean, obviously, they're it, de it depends like everything else in the world. It depends. But uh, for the most part, Lego sells super fast. Um so that's kind of my, I guess that's how I would have to tell somebody that really doesn't have the knowledge is start start with retail and move, move online. I would say move online as quickly as possible because the, the in-store retail is, that is the lowest hanging fruit out there. But uh, that becomes a regional thing. You know, here in Savannah, there's about five of us sourcing now. There's not a lot to be found in the stores around here because we only have one of anything. There's just not that much. There used to be a ton of stuff. You know, when I started a year and a half ago, and I think I was the only one in this area, I had, I had more to choose from than I could possibly pay for. Now it's a little different story. Uh, now, I know this per person's in a bigger city, so I think that might play into it. Maybe they have better luck in a, in a big city. I don't know how much competition. I don't even know what city. But what are your feelings on retail versus online? Um, I, I agree that um, if... I'm going to recommend to somebody to start with retail because I also like the idea of actually being able to grab the product. Grab it, have it in your hands, um, and I, I don't know, I just I think you're more in the trenches when you're doing the retail arbitrage. Uh, online arbitrage can be really overwhelming, and I, I just think it's a lot easier to go into a particular store and be walking up and down the aisles with your scanner and just getting that instant feedback each item that you grab. And the other thing it does is it really, you immerse yourself in a particular category. And that's another thing I recommend. Uh, a lot of people say, well, I go to Walmart and I just scan everything in the store. Well, of course, they're not being truthful with that. Nobody's scanning everything in the store. But I tell people that your ultimate goal is to be very wide, both in product depth and in category. But I think you need to start in one or two categories until you really know how that category works. 
you know, everybody knows that my category is HBA. And luckily, so far, knock on wood, I've survived all of the, uh, the things that have been going on. But I know that category. I know if an item is ranked 20,000 in beauty, how often it's going to sell. Um, I know the things that are going to work. I know the complementary products. So if I'm building bundles, I know what goes together now. So I, I really think that people need to do that rather than when you ask them, what are you selling? And they say everything. And then they show you a, uh, a, a capture of their sales chart. And sure enough, they've got 17 categories. And they've got three items sold here, two items there, one there. And you're really all over the place. And I just can't believe that you know when you pick up an item that you really understand if this is a good buy or not. Because just knowing that it's ranked 5,000, I, I get that question all the time. Got an item ranked 5,000, so how many should I buy? Well, w wait a minute, 5,000 in what? Uh, uh, you know, a 5,000 in toys, a 5,000 in the consumer electronics, or a 5,000 in pets? There, it's a huge yeah. difference, huge difference. And sometimes... Yeah, I was they, thinking... Yeah, go ahead. No, just, yeah, 5,000 in baby. I promise is not the same as five thousand in toy. You know, five thousand in baby Absolutely. doesn't mean anything other than one one sold in the last twenty four hours. That that five thousand may shoot to forty before it ever sells again. Right. So yeah, there are some goofy categories out there. Yeah, so I, I really do think it's important that you you, you really try and uh, understand the category. And by the way, HBA is health beauty health and beauty aids. So it covers in Amazon there's a uh, really two major categories. It's health and personal care and beauty. And then lots of subcategories and such under that. Uh, and that's another one. They'll say it's ranked such and such in HBA. No, it's not. It, it's either ranked something in health and personal care or it's ranked something in beauty. An item that's ranked 30,000 in health and personal care sells a heck of a lot faster than an item ranked 30,000 in beauty. So those yeah. are the types of things that people will just get tripped up on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, health and personal care is about twice as big as beauty. So where I'll go up to 100,000 in health and personal care, you know, my, my comfort zone ends about 50,000 in, in beauty. So I don't know what your feeling is. You know beauty a lot better than I do, but that's, that's what I use as general guidelines. Well, well 50,000 is not a fast turn. But if it's a good margin item, absolutely, I'll, I'll go ahead and put a few. Uh, beauty for fast term, I, fast term, I would consider closer to the 25,000 range, as long as I don't have 18 other people on that item. So if it's 25,000 yeah, beauty, I've got one or two people, yeah, I'll sell five, six of them a week. And that, that, to me, is a fast term. Yeah, competition definitely plays a factor in that also. I mean, it, you know. Are you getting all the sales at fifty thousand, or are you getting one of ten sales at fifty thousand? Which is going to mean, you know, you, you either sell two a month or you sell twenty a month. You know, it just right. to totally different ball game when you when you factor in competition. So, all right. Uh, oh, did all right, we so that, let me jump I off. I just Andy wanted to, uh, to come on. You know, quick, I think you just dropped off. Two cents. All right. Yeah, yeah. I guess he's gone. I was interested in what he had to say. But okay, thank you for coming on, Michael. I appreciate it as always. And again, thank you for the, uh, the help with backing up the hard drive, man. I appreciate it. All right, good stuff. Mike Michael is a sharp guy, man. He, he is a very, very smart individual. So, uh, yeah, Natalie, I, I put that up on the screen just so I could remember to, uh, to get back to this. And I should have asked while Michael was on, but yeah. Does this person know what to buy? I can't imagine jumping into wholesale without having an, an idea of what sells. And yeah, let me share you, with you guys a little experience of what happened the other day. Uh, yeah, I would not jump into wholesale right away. There's no way. Uh, you got to get your feet wet in the beginning. You, you got to understand sales rank and how, how things sell and what good products are versus iffy products versus you know, what you can have 100 competitors with and what you can only have 10. And wholesale is a tough way to go to, to learn all that. You know, when you can go buy two clearance items and send it in with where your cost of goods is 10 bucks and you may make 20 or 30 or you may lose 10, that's a, that's a whole different world than buying $1,000 worth of something 
and hoping that you are right. So uh, definitely, definitely changes the equation. If you don't know what you're doing, you do not jump straight into wholesale. Now, when do you jump into wholesale? And, and what I should say is when you jump into wholesale, this is what I learned. Those, those minimum order quantities, and this is another tip that came straight from Michael, and then I posted it in the coaching group and found out that a lot of the other people were already aware. Just because they say minimum order quantity is X, and in this case it was a, a number of products, that's negotiable. I had no idea, okay, because I was looking at it, and I, you know, I make some very stern rules um, that, I, that I stick to, not because I'm a genius, that, that said, hey, uh, you know, if people do this and that, then that'll keep them safe. No, what happened was I got burned. I got burned a lot in the beginning. I made a lot of mistakes. And through those mistakes, I was able to form my own set of rules that I now play by. And I was very close to breaking one of those. The one that is don't put more than 20% of your sourcing budget into one product. And I will even take that a step further and say one product line the reason I say a product line is we saw what happened with Frozen. And if you had more than 20% of your budget, even if it was, uh, you know, say you had 10% in each one of the dolls, and there are five different dolls, well, you could have had 50% of your budget. You still fall in line with uh, not having more than 20% in one product, but, you know, you had 50% of your money in one product line, and it happened to get shut down by Amazon. That's not cool. <laughs> you just lost a ton of money, and you may not be able to recover from that. So, uh, yeah, I uh, so I, I stick to that that rule of twenty percent. Well, I almost broke it. I got to tell you, because a, a manufacturer of a product that I am salivating to get my hands on, uh, they they had a higher minimum requirement than. I had cash to stay within that 20% rule. It was going to take more than 20% of my budget to make this deal work. And I was torn. I was torn for about two days. And I talked to some people that I trusted, got their advice. And luckily, one of the people that I talked to was Michael Flanagan. And he said, okay, go back to that uh, distributor, wholesaler, and tell them you're, you're, you want to test some of their products. You want to test some of their lines. So you'll meet their overall minimum item requirement, but you want a little bit of this, you want a little bit of that. You know, you're going to mix it a, amongst multiple products instead of just buying a certain number of one product and going really deep in that one. Okay. And uh, so I said, hey, I, I've got nothing to lose. Let me try it. It took a little convincing because it's, it's, I am not comfortable with asking for a deal. Okay. I figure. That's what you're selling it at. It's up to me whether I buy it or not. Uh, it's I'm not a negotiator. Uh, it's one of the things that I, I tried the Dave Ramsey stuff. And, you know, I love Dave Ramsey. You know, I follow probably 90% of what he says. One of the things I don't follow that I think is great advice, I just don't have it in me, is to always try to ask for a deal. You know, he's a great negotiator. I am not. So it was very uncomfortable, even even through email, to send this rep a request for spreading out the order amongst multiple products instead of having to go so deep in, in individual products. And they came back and they said, um, yeah, that's no problem. If you're trying to test our product line and you're trying to get an idea of what sells and what doesn't, uh, you know, and they, they knew I was on Amazon, that wasn't a problem. They didn't care. And they came back and said, sure, we can work with you on the first order. Now, I should be able to very easily make enough money on that first order to fund a, a full order quantity on the second order, okay? And if things don't work out right, then at least I didn't blow my whole budget finding out I was wrong. So it was great advice that, that Michael gave to me. And I thought, um, you know, he, he deserves a lot of credit for that. Uh, I thought it was a great idea. It, it helped me keep within my own limits, which, you know, it's, it's very important for me to to be upfront with you guys about what I'm doing, and it it would have been just strictly hypocritical for me to say never spend more than 20% of your budget on any one product or product line, and then go do it. Uh, you know that the, there's no way around it, and that bothered me a lot. And uh, so he helped me, you know, straighten it all out, and uh, I appreciate that. So 
Bob Willie, you know, he, he's just master seller. Nothing bothers him. He said, I negotiate at stores when buying from peeps all the time. All they can do is say no. They don't usually bite. <laughs> yeah, you know, and if you get bit, it's probably not going to hurt. You just go get a rabies shot or maybe tetanus or something. You'll be fine. Whatever. All right, Andy Slamens is back on. we got about 10 minutes left. So let's bring Andy on and see what he says about where he would start. <laughs> What's going on, man? Hey, You're crazy. Hey, how are you? <laughs> The FBA junkie himself, in case you guys don't know, post your spreecast or link or something. <laughs> Self-promote a little bit because you are the FBA junkie uh, who's killing it, absolutely killing it with FBA. Uh, you shared some numbers with me. I will not share those, but just suffice it to say, dude, congratulations. You are on a roll, sir. So, well, hey, I'm but, having fun. I'm having well. Go ahead. Absolutely. Introduce yourself a little. Uh, bit. My name is Andy Slammons. Uh, I just went full time uh, about two months ago. So prior to that, uh, I was part time for about a year. I actually had the pleasure of sourcing with Dwayne Fast Turn Malik uh, about I don't know what was it about six months ago, and uh, from his yeah, it was right around. And the it was a uh, awesome experience. Actually, I went with Dwayne and with. John T. Rex Grolo. So we spent a day together. They got me pumped up. They talked me into quitting my job. They said, Andy, go full time. You can do it. <laughs> so I, 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 I did Absolutely. take the plunge. And uh, thankfully and luckily, it's working out so far. My, uh, my goal, Dwayne, I shared with you was to uh, hit a thousand dollars a day in June. And, um, and I was able to do that. So that was like my second month full time. So I'm having a, a great time. And I'm just amazed at the number of ways that you can uh, make money on Amazon. Yeah, that, that's actually what's blowing me away. And, and you, you, have, you have tried so many different ways. It's amazing. And you seem to be succeeding at all of them. And just uh, big, big props to you, man. You are you're just killing it. I don't know any other way to put it. Yeah, I mean, I've seen the growth. You share the numbers. You share the info. It's well, amazing. So, guys, li listen to this guy right here. Well, hey, I want to address. On. I know you guys are talking about the baby category, right? And I think you have to preface. I think you have to preface yeah. the five thousand rank. So here, here's what I've. I just looked at my inventory. So I have an item that's ranked five thousand in baby, but I control that buy box ninety five percent of the time. So what? Here's here's a question for you. How many do you think that I've sold just in the last month? Five thousand a, a ranked item. Yeah, five thousand right. well, in the baby category. See, now now here's the tough part about rank because I've watched it. I've watched something go from twenty thousand in grocery at at six o'clock in the morning to forty thousand in grocery at eight o'clock that night, and then back up the next morning. So I know these ranks fall throughout the day. I don't, I don't know about baby specifically, but when you say five thousand, is that first thing in the morning? Like that's I mean, the, is average. That the average. This that's, is a five thousand. That's 000. the average. Like over the All month, right. so it probably, this item has fluctuated from about four thousand to twelve thousand. But I would say the average, and and I check, I okay. check the rank in this every day. So you know, the average is five thousand over the month. All right, I'm going to say that you sold, and I know I'm going to be way off, 5,000, see, and I don't even know the baby category, so this is a total shot in the dark. I'm going to say you sold, I'll go with, I'll, I'll go on a limb, say two a day. I'll say you sold wow, 60 you're pretty close. a month. 72. <laughs> All right. <laughs> see, totally that, that was out a, of thin air. Yes. Uh, yeah, they, Ba baby is insane because I, I literally I have had a baby product that was ranked five thousand and it sat and sat and sat and it got to like forty thousand and then it sold and it dropped right back down to like the five thousand range. So I I know some of those products. It's like one sale a day seems to to put you at that five thousand. So if you can dip down to the fours or threes, that means you're selling more than than one a day. Uh, that and that's a neat thing about rank. It resets every day. If you watch some of these, uh, if you watch some of these products, you'll notice first thing in the morning. If you have a consistent number of sales, you'll see that rank 
go up and just like I did with the grocery item. It, you know, 20,000 every morning. I, I mean, it was like a week straight. I sold one a day. I don't know how I just sold one a day every day for a week, but it made this beautiful little chart where I could just follow it all. And uh, yeah, so it, it reset, fell down, reset, fell down. And I think all, all categories well, do that. So how much competition? There wasn't any competition, right? You, you had to buy well, that 99% it, it, of the time. That, that to me, it's totally. interesting too. Like in the baby category, I'm a I'm a member of a couple groups where they'll send out lists. You know, like two or three lists per week of buys, and it seems like the majority of buys on those lists come from the baby category. Now, the majority of those, you know, they're the group ones. You know, they probably have some VA, you know, that does it for them, or between twenty thousand and fifty thousand. I don't touch those. Um, Here's, yeah, like you said, if you got competition in the baby category, say you got 10 other sellers and you're at 5,000, then how many are you sell in a day? None? <laughs> like you're yeah. selling, what, one a week? <laughs> you know, if, you're selling, if you're selling 72, yeah, you're going to sell seven in a month. So you might sell two, right. a, two a week, I guess. And then if, yeah, you, have, it, uh, if you have 5,000 in the toy category, though, and you got 10 competitors or 10 other people on the listing, how many are you selling? I find five thousand in toy. I don't care how many people are on the listing. Right. Honestly, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, it's you're going to make your money at some point. So, yeah, to totally different worlds. So, hopefully, that's uh, good information for some of the the newer sellers. And and I appreciate the information because I am not a baby category seller. Anyone that's followed me for any amount of time knows I hate baby because it, it's just unpredictable. Now, in your case, you have obviously made it predictable. Now, I had did, no problem with that. Um, but for me, just as, as a scanner monkey, you know, going out there, zapping stuff. Now, did you know, and I, I just heard this. I didn't even know this. In the baby category, there's a, a one-year return policy? No. I did not. <laughs> no. That's awful. I don't know. If, if anyone in the chat room could confirm <laughs> that. Somebody told me that the other day, and I'm like, oh, crap. Supposedly, in, in the baby <laughs> yeah. category, so, there's a full one-year return policy. Oh, good. Darla says now it's 90 days instead of a year. I, I would hope so. And don't try to sell used <laughs> in the baby category. They, they don't want your used stuff going out to, <laughs> to little babies. So there's no used in baby. I don't, you know, they, they don't want your return stuff. Uh, yeah, no used diapers. No used uh, baby diaper genie liners or whatever. <laughs> yeah, uh, there. Bob's got the uh, the link for us. There you go. Yeah, so I'm not a fan of baby myself, but I'm glad you're killing it with baby. Uh, congratulations, overall, you are doing yep, a fantastic thanks. job. Uh, so, real quick, we got one minute. If you are starting today, let's take the the knowing what you know. If you're starting today, would you focus retail arbitrage or online? Uh, I would definitely do retail. I would, and I always say this: I would start with thrift stores and garage sales. When I first started, I killed it on margin with thrift stores and garage sales. Um, didn't have a lot of money, but man, yeah. it, but you know what? I had the passion then and I had the time. And so I would do the work, you know, to put my boots on the ground at those thrift stores and those garage sales. And then, and then scan, scan. And then, yeah. you know what? The, Dwayne, the Facebook is amazing. I learned this business from freaking Facebook. That's how I learned it. I would stay up like six hours straight reading Scan Power, you know, in every single post. And and you know now, yeah. And now I'm selling a thousand dollars a day, all from posts from Bob uh, Willie and and other folks like that, Darla and, and KIB. Yeah. It's it's insane. It really is the amount of information and and how easy it is to get started. Now, where you separate and where you have separated yourself, definitely, is you didn't take the basic information and stop there. You, you took it and you explored where you started with garage sale and thrift. You probably don't do any of that anymore, I wouldn't imagine. You know, you, you have moved your, your business to this whole other area and, and you've done some different things. So you took the information, made it your own, and you excelled. And that's, that's why it blows me away when people go, well, there's only so much pie but unlimited seats at the table. Come on. There's so much pie out there. 
We can't. We can't. We can't feed all the people just, with the pie. I mean, it's all it's the, all just the beginning. You know, we're still in the infancy. You know yeah. that? I mean, it is just beginning. Yeah. We're lucky. If you're watching, if you're part of Dwayne's group, if you're on this precast, you were born at the right time because we are getting in on it at the ground right. level. I, when I went to ASD and I met with some veteran sellers, and these are guys that are selling six, seven million a year, they said, Andy, you got to understand, you were getting in at the beginning. This thing is just starting. 10% is, is bought online. He said, I can easily see it going to 50% in the next 10 to 20 years. And this is a guy who's been selling a long time, six to seven million a year. We're getting in at the right time, Dwayne. Finally, finally. Because look, yeah, because when I yes. go to, you know, what are those uh, door prizes? I never win. All right. I never win. I finally got in at the right time. And I'm thankful. You got it's the <laughs> FBA door prize. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, Andy Slamet's at his finest, too. That's hilarious. You need to come back down here. We need to source again. Right. Thank you, sir. We're going to wrap it up. We, there's other spree casts coming up after mine, so I want to make sure people can uh, get to that. But Andy, oh, good stuff. He's a trip, guys. He, and that's him in real life. You talk about energy, high energy. So, yeah, I had the pleasure of spending the day with he or him. He, English, not really my, my best language. I need to find a new one. Anyway. I spent the day with Andy and John Grolo, and let me tell you, um, filled my head with just information and camaraderie, and we just, we had fun, period. So, uh, Corina Stevens, which Spreecast is up next? That I think, doesn't uh, AFT have one? I thought they had one at 8.15, or 9.15, excuse me. So, yeah, Andy, tell us how you really feel about FBA. No kidding. Um yeah, so there you go, guys. We're, 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 you're in at the right time. It, it, it really is the beginning. I mean, oh, okay. Michael Flanagan says 10, 15 Eastern. All right, I thought it was uh, that was Eastern time. So anyhow, I do want to wrap it up because, hey, who wants to listen to me for more than an hour? But Michael Flanagan, Andy Slamans, thank you guys so much for coming on. You made it a blast. Uh, I know the person that asked the question about the retail versus online was is he's actually here in the chat room. So Thanks for all the advice and uh, good stuff. Darla, as always, appreciate you being a great producer. Oh, did we get in, uh, uh, Amanda Moak's book up, though? I, I do want to put the link to the book just real quick. We did. Okay, cool. As long as people saw it. It's gone. That's fine. I want to make sure people got it if they wanted it. And uh, all right. Glad you guys joined us and uh, had a good time. Hopefully we didn't share too much information so that we ruined the whole, you know, pie eating contest thing. Uh, oh, yeah. And last thing, if you want to get on the, uh, what do you call those texts? Yeah. If you want to get on the texting list, if you text the word fast turn, so it's all one word, fast turn. There you go. Darlow's got it to 71441, you will receive a text message about 20 minutes before the show starts. And uh, it'll just kind of, re a little reminder goes out to you that we're, we're getting pumped up and ready to go. Have no idea what we'll talk about next week. I never know what we're going to talk about, but it's coming. Uh, Michael Flanagan, kind enough to put the link to my coaching group up there. So if you want to join the coaching, uh, where Andy Slammons is a part of that. Uh, Bob Willie's a part of that. Michael Flanagan's a part of that. There are some big heavy hitters that I am proud to, to to have in that group that are in there helping me help you guys. So it's great, great group. It really is. It's awesome. So if you guys want to join, that's the link. It'll be open at the current price of one ninety seven until the end of the month. Uh, where where did the number go? It's seven one four four one. There we go. We'll put that back on the screen. All right, guys, have a good night. We'll see you next week, 8 p.m. for Fast Turn Radio. Peace.